hello families uh, i'm going to ask all the kids to please follow me outside to do the procession Good evening. Welcome to our Catholic home here at St. Pius X. These are the announcements for our parish community. This weekend, we joyfully celebrate the first Holy Communion of our children. Let us unite in prayer, asking God to bless these children and their families abundantly on this special day. Let's keep them in our prayers as they embark on this sacred journey. Next weekend, on Saturday the 20th, during the 5 p.m. Mass, Archbishop Alexander Sample will administer the Sacrament of Confirmation to our 108 candidates. Please note, this Mass is expected to have a larger attendance as they warmly welcome this year's confirmation candidates. Please see the bulletin for more details on these and other events. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Rose Scherzinger. Our celebrant this evening is our parochial vicar, Father Joachim Gracias. Now, I invite everyone to please stand To prepare ourselves to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter, I invite us as one community to pray the prayer of discipleship. Lord Jesus, risen King, come to us in your word. Let us believe what we receive. 
Let us grow in courage to share our faith as we are strengthened by the reception of your body and blood here in Holy Mass. Let us witness to our communion with you in our relationship with others. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, it's a joyful day today to see these 33 young kids all ready with their white garment to receive Jesus for the first time. And we as their parents, grandparents, friends, and parishioners, today we pray for them. That the journey they start by receiving Jesus, they may be strengthened every day of their life. And Jesus may be the center of their life. And for the many times we have failed to trust in the Lord, many a time we have failed to feed ourselves on the body and blood of Jesus. Many a time we have failed to make him the center of our life. Let us feel sorry and ask pardon and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for the fears of the Jew, Jesus came and stood in their meats and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And whose sins are you retain are retained? Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the nail mark, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hands and put into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to them, To him, my Lord and my God. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters and the little ones who are going to receive the first Holy Communion, Jesus for the first time. And as I was seeing the children walking in front of me, and as I sat on the chair and looked at their faces, I was taken 44 years back at my own first Holy Communion. 
It's a day of joy. It's a day of joy. Because the Eucharist is the center and summit of our life. Our whole life revolves around the Eucharist. In baptism, we become children of God. We become holy. And that's why every one of you are wearing the white garment, white dress. Why? Why not blue? Why not pink? Why? Because that reminds us of our baptism day. On our baptism day, you may not remember, but if you have some pictures, go. You were wearing a white dress, a white garment, signifying that you are made holy and pure. And this holiness, this identity of each one of us is sustained by what? By the Eucharist, by the body and blood of Jesus. Jesus helps us at every Eucharist to continue to keep that holiness, that belovedness of us. Today, I will not reflect on the gospel, but I have a message for the little kids first, and then surely for the parents. Surely for the parents, because sometimes the parents are found only, some of y'all are only found on the first Holy Communion. Then you'll be here in the church for the confirmation of your child. Then they go for hibernation for four or five years. So I want to talk to the parents. This is the only occasion I can get them here during this Mass. My dear kiddos, I think y'all are here for what? What are you here? Why are you here today? Why are you here? First Holy Communion. I have this too something. Can you see here? I have a, what is this is what? A cracker? And this is what? Eucharist, wow. Eucharist, Holy Communion. This is a cracker. They look alike. Are they round? Yes. Okay. If you eat them, would they taste similar? This is like a little cracker, but it is white. This is a cracker, but it is little brown. They are both crackers, if you go to see. But what is the difference between both of them? This is the body of Jesus. This is not the body of Jesus, isn't it? <laughs> this is not the body of Jesus. This is the body of Jesus. Now, how this becomes the body of Jesus? How? It is blessed. When it is blessed? When it is blessed? I forgot. I forgot. Okay, no, no problem. I'll remind you. I remind you. You know we have consecration. We have consecration. We take the Holy Communion and raise it up like this. That is the time it is blessed. That is called consecration. And what happens during this time? We take the, uh, the host and we bless it, as Jesus did at the Last Supper. And this host, this cracker, white color, turns after the blessing into what? The body of Jesus. Though it may look like a host, white color, it may taste like a bread, it is no longer a bread. It is the body of Jesus. Getting it? It is called, I had explained to you all in the class, there is a word called transubstantiation. At the consecration, it is transubstantiation. The substances remain the same. It is white, made of wheat, it tastes like a bread, but it becomes into the substance of body and blood of Jesus. That is that. And Jesus is really present. It's not like a symbol or a sign of Jesus' body. It is Jesus really present. It's the flesh of Jesus. And do you remember during the class I showed you all some Eucharistic miracles? Where 
the bread has changed into the flesh of Jesus? People doubted. People doubted. Is it really the body of Jesus? And around the world, we have hundreds of miracles where this bread, this host, have really changed into the flesh of Jesus. Recently, recently, I think two months back, we had it in one of the places where the bread had changed into the body of Jesus, flesh of Jesus. And today, you are going to receive not a cracker. Remember, don't come with your hands in your pocket. Come with all respect, you are receiving the body of Jesus. For the first time, you are touching whom? You are touching Jesus. It's a beautiful opportunity for you all for the first time to hold Jesus. As the disciple did, they held the hands of Jesus. They touched him. Today, you all are going to touch Jesus. Your creator who loves you all, your friend for the first time. Are you all happy? Are you all excited? Yes. Okay? And keep this excitement always when you'll come for the Eucharist. Okay? Are you all promising me? Yes. Now to the parents. To the godparents. To the family members. You all are happy today that you all brought your children here. I, and I could see the excitement in the parents. Clicking the photos, laughing, saying hi. You all are all excited. When a child graduates, on the day of their graduation, you all come, you all are excited. And now, do you think they are graduating in faith? Don't consider it as a graduation. Graduation, and that's the last thing, no. Don't think it, you all are tick marking a box. Oh, my child has received now the First Holy Communion. Now, what is left next? Confirmation. Then done. No. They are starting a new journey. And you as parents are starting a new responsibility. You as parents are starting a new responsibility. Do you remember on your day of your wedding, what you all promised when you made your vows, exchanged your vows, that you will bring up your children in the faith of God, in a good faith. You promise God, as husband and wife, in good times and bad times, you will support this family. What was the promise? The promise were to be together always as one body, to give rise to children, to give birth to children, and the third thing is to educate them in Catholic faith. That was your promise on your wedding day. And this promise you renew when you brought the child, your sons and daughters, for baptism. Do you remember? The priest asked, what do you want from the church? And happily you said baptism. And then, do you take up all the responsibilities to bring up this child in Catholic faith? And what was your answer? With all excitement you said, yes, I do. Let the excitement start today. Here starts a journey. They are small, like God has put them in your care. You have this responsibility. You have to nurture them in your faith, in their faith. They are small kids. Like a small plants need watering, care, manuring. They are like a small plant. God has placed in under your care. You need to nurture their faith. Don't Try to make your children successful. I know all parents have a dream to see their child successful. Do you have a dream to see your child as a saint? Any one of you. Is that your dream for your child? Dream that your child becomes a saint. And if he's a saint, he will be successful. Every successful person is not a saint. But every saint is successful. Think of making your child a saint. Work for that. Work for that. And that's your responsibility. And how it starts to give that holiness, to build up their faith by praying in the family. 
by praying in the family. Today I can say I'm a priest and I got this vocation because every day in our house we would pray. We would pray the rosary, we would read the Bible. My mother would, I could not understand what was read, but she would explain to me. That's how I got this vocation to priesthood. It comes from your family. Family is called a domestic church where the faith starts, where the church starts. You need to gather your children to pray. Do you all have a place in your house for a prayer? A small table with, or what we call the altar, where you have a crucifix, a Bible, some candles, where you gather around to pray? Do you all have it at home? If you don't have it, you will not pray. You cannot sit and pray in your rocking chair. You cannot pray in front of the TV. You cannot pray in your bedrooms. The best place is to make a comfortable area where you pray and gather your children. Oh, it is said, a family that prays together stays together. Today, there are so many parents saying, our ch children are gone away from the Catholic faith. I don't know where are my children. I have not heard from them for years. And I asked them, had you all prayed together? Had you prayed together with your kids when they were young? No, Father. A family that prays together stays together. If you want your children to be always with you all, pray together. The second thing is, bring your children for mass. Let this first communion not be their retirement day. Not their retirement day or the last day to come for mass. It's the beginning. It's just the beginning. Try to get them every Sunday for mass. If you don't inculcate that taste for the Eucharist, they will be away from the church. Then don't blame them. It's your responsibility to get them for mass. I appreciate the parents every Sunday getting their children for mass. Even they have sports, they have games, they will make it a they try to get them first for church and then they go for other activities. And the third thing is, parents, be a good example for your kids. They learn from you. They learn from you. They are like small sponge. You know sponge? If you put in the water, what it does? It soaks the water. It takes the water in them. The kids are like that. They learn from you. They see what you do. They hear what you talk. And then they make your, their life what you have fed them. If you want to see your children saints, give them good example. If you do that, I'm sure your children will be holy. Your children will be the beloved of Jesus. Today, that's your responsibility. That's your responsibility. As we come around this Eucharist, let us... Pray for these little kids, and I pray for you parents too, grandparents, that you may be given the grace by God to fulfill your responsibility that you took on your marriage day and at the, at the time of their baptism, to care for them and bring them in Catholic faith. For this grace, let us pray during this Holy Eucharist. Let us all rise. <clears throat> Let us renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, to the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promise of our holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, I ask each one of you, do you renounce Satan and all his works 
and all his empty shows. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness for our sin, keep us by his grace, in Jesus Christ our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. When Jesus broke the bread, the disciples' eyes were open and they recognized him. We turn to the Father and pray that our eyes and the eyes of the world may be open to God's infinite love. For Pope Francis, that he may be blessed with the gifts of integrity, courage, and humility as he feeds the flock the Lord has entrusted to his care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and reconciliation in Israel and Palestine, so that its people can share in the joy <coughs> which living as God's loving children can bring to all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children who today, for the first time, will receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion, May their enthusiasm for God never wane throughout their lives, and may they always recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel distant from the presence of God, that they may encounter him anew through the witness of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially for Timothy Fornshell, son of Lorraine Fornshell, and for Janice Knightling, sister of Larry Knightling, that God may give eternal rest and joy to all whom he has called from his life, this life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope, through the breaking of the bed, we come to know the love of your son, Jesus. Hear our prayers that strengthened by his constant presence, we may live with the flame of faith alive in our hearts. We ask this to Christ, our resurrected Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, this offering of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciple saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Alexander our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the severe's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you unto my room, but will you say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Alleluia. In his name, repentance and remission of sins must be preached to all the nations. Alleluia.
for your praise. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace of Christ.